Hi everyone, and today over here at the Classic Quest Podcast, we're doing something a little a little out of our scope as we talk about Buju Bantin's Upside Down 2020 album Upside and give our album review for every single track on this project. My name is Holden Stefan Roy. I am your lady friend Bonnie. And yep, like I said, this is the Classic Quest Podcast, the show where we break down the classics track by track, giving thoughts and opinions on every single song. Them to you. All 20 of them in this case. So today, this episode is happening because Mr. Jonathan Barnes over on the Patreon squad requested it. So if you support what we do, you can check that out. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, yep. So if you are wondering why we did this album, the answer is a request from our patron. So that is the answer to that question. Because I yep. know when we go a little bit left field, uh, we attract a different audience who who questions maybe sometimes why we decided to get brave and allow us to be clear we didn't choose to get brave the braveness was thrust upon us out of a curiosity to see what we would think we take it on i digress before we get into all that i do make music myself you can check that out on this channel under our music playlist you can also check in the description if you follow me on spotify be my best friend that would be super super duper cool Mm -hmm. on that note there's a lot of songs so i don't really really want to waste time we do like to start every episode describing our familiarity with the artist um so did you know buju banton before this no i knew the name because i went to a high school that was full of caribbean students and uh as I came to see on my Wikipedia readings, uh, Mr. Banton over here is, is I, I don't know if it's still the case, but he was at one point the biggest selling artist in Jamaica, uh, outselling Mr. Bob Marley. So I thought that was like cool. pretty significant. It made me go, damn, this guy is like- I'm pretty wild powerhouse. that like I hadn't heard about him. Um, and then like I went through and saw how significant he was. And um, I know he was on my mind kind of quasi recently because there was a little bit of that controversy uh, with related to that song, y'all know what I mean, um, where he uh, has decided to no longer perform it. I yeah. remember that being news. I also realized, I remember when he got out of jail, that was huge. Um, there's a large part of my Facebook, I'm a Facebook, I'm kind of old in my 30s, uh, who um, definitely is from the Caribbean, and they went nuts when he got released. Uh, I don't remember why he, he got locked up, but I know, I think it was from 2011 to 2018, he was gone. Let me look that up. Um, and since that point, uh, this would be the first full-length project he has dropped. Uh, that was his music, I believe, because I think he had a curated something before this. Maybe I'm, I'm mixing him up. He had a role in setting up a cocaine deal. Fair enough. Um, so basically, this is a big deal, as I understand it, because when you check his wiki, his last studio album under like all of this is 2010. So we're talking about like a decade later, the man is here dropping this album. So I'm giving it all the respect. A little bit of a spoiler is while I may not fully um, appreciate everything on this project out of ignorance and stuff like I'm not a the I don't understand reggae music, and I find music <laughs> is a lot like a language. And the more you understand the language, the more come to appreciate it i do have a bigger affinity and love towards dance hall because it's more upbeat it's it's quicker in a lot of cases and i okay. kind of like the faster bpms in general and the music that i listen to but all i can say is i opened up my mind and i came into this project and we will get into all my thoughts but honestly i admire and respect this this artist here it made me like really appreciate just for those of you that that don't stick around, um, I just appreciate how versatile this project comes off, um, how many mm, different styles get explored, and just like he is very impressive. Like there's not a lot of people, in my opinion, that are able to come up with an uh, an album that's an hour and twelve minutes, and by the end of it, you're left with a sense of man, he never he never like repeated himself. He never he never did the same thing twice, right? Yeah. So I think that gives this whole project a lot. And I think if you are coming back ten years later to drop something, and that something is significant. It's pretty meaningful, and I'm not like a longtime Buju Banton fan or anything like that. But before we like, I guess, get into the track by tracks, I wanted to ask y'all: um, Did this album like live up to the hype for you fans who like actually waited the ten years and stuff? Like, is this the thing that like you were hoping for, or was it not? Like, I didn't look at any reviews of it or anything. I just kind of went in, listened, and you're gonna hear what I think, but. What we do. I don't think my opinion counts in regards to 
does this album stand up <clears throat> compared to maybe somebody from Jamaica or somebody who actually is more attached to this guy's career over the last while? So in that well, regard, I'm that super curious. I think there's going to be a differing opinion. Like if, you know, if you're listening to this and like you're like, you know, from Jamaica and you were living in Jamaica or whatever, um, like I think that you're going to obviously have like a different opinion probably on like some of the music than us and maybe it's like what it means and like you know the influence and like the language because half of it I do not understand yeah. just the heads up like I'm like I'm reading along with the lyrics and I'm not hearing what I'm reading and it does it's just no, like I, a lot of the time that seems to be the case I'm a little more familiar with the uh, patois I, I dated a, a Jamaican girl at one point for about two and a half years, so mm. there was a couple of words I uh, picked up. Like he says, "pickney" at some point. I don't. I know I didn't say it right, but I know that means child because she taught me that. And anyway, you, you, I don't know. I guess I've been exposed to enough of it through high school. Because yo, what I learned being an annoying young white boy is if you make a Jamaican lady very angry, you are going to hear patois as she spits at you a lot of vile stuff that makes you fear fear is the right word um honestly it's like i don't i don't know like but i know i got threatened with a nail file at one point over some <laughs> breaking see i broke the cd case for mm -hmm. the pink album misunderstood well, there you and go. she was not having it Nope. And I didn't replace it because I, I couldn't at that time with no money. Oh, boy. She would just look at me and, like, pull it out, like, give me this glare. Like, she just fucked with me so hard on that one. Anyway, well, I deserved. learned lessons. I was. I broke her CD case. Big deal. I'm not yep. even saying it's a you small deal. respect people's stuff, man. I'm not saying it's a small deal. I'm saying that over the course of my life, I've learned that it can be very scary to make the my rate. That's all I'm saying. Anyway. Um, yeah. Anyway. What do you think of the cover? I like it. Um, yeah. I find it really cool. It, it's like, I don't know if there's some inner symbolism here, but just the way his hair flies around is, is lovely to look at. Like, yeah. like he's just so lost in it, like in the middle of a headbang and his head is just flying around like he's just caught up in his music. Mm -hmm. The colors elicit this level of like joy, right? Like yeah, I just feel I, they're I positive. I just thought it was like lots of like coolness to it. Like it just is like a cool looking cover. It has like this artistic feel, like somebody actually put some effort into capturing, I guess, the emotional complexity of this album, mm -hmm. which I think is in fact conveyed with all the colors and the chaoticness of it all. There's like um, colors and like movement, like within the image, like it feels like it's like, like you feel like the movement of him. Like, I don't know, it's cool. And considering it's called Upside Down 2020, and I guess in that sense, the whole chaos of the picture, I think it really fits. Mm -hmm. When I hear Upside Down, I mean, it's 2020. I mean, you just you just look around. Everything feels like it's upside down. Yep. I don't know that I can go deeper on that. I think the title is just an apt, it's an apt way to describe human emotion, which is always kind of upside down. We're always all over the place, you know. Mm -hmm. Even the most put together people are still kind of all over the place. Throughout the day, you're gonna have highs and lows and happies and sads and of stuff. Of course, yeah. I don't know. Do you have anything more about any of the covers and stuff? Anything more to comment before we break it down each track? Nope. Let's get into Lamb of God. All uh, right. I, like, tried to Google to see if this was, like, a, a hymn or a thing that exists but prior to this track because I couldn't tell it. But, like, yo, it comes off so much like a hymn. And I failed so hard to find, like, any particular thing. So I just wanted to know, audience, um, if this is, like, an actual thing that he's paying hom homage to or if it's, like, just he, he came up with this. Because I, I couldn't tell, but it sounds like some of the best church music I ever done heard as far as the, like, lane of church music is concerned. It is clearly in the nature of a, a, a hymn. Um, I mean, there is, I found one that there is, like, one titled Lamb of God, but, but it's not quite the, the same. But when you check the lyrics, they're yeah. not the same, so I couldn't find anything, that, or, like, that's why I was asking. I, I, I found, like, six or seven separate hymns that have combinations of these words, so. Right. It almost comes off uh, generic, but uh, what do you think of this song? Um, it's very, like, saxophony. Um, so it kind of sounds like it could have been from like recorded or like made in like the 80s like it kind of like has like that kind of like Kenny G feel um, so I think that that's kind of cool that he's able to kind of like 
throwback to like a different time or like I don't know if you did that on purpose but that's my interpretation of it um, yeah I would say that this is definitely at least sounds like a hymn I mean I don't know any hymns so um, to me I would just I, I would just assume that this is a hymn but I don't know um, if, if you know let me know um, you know, he's, you know, he's basically saying like, have mercy on him. He's basically asking for forgiveness. Um, and he's showing us right away that he is, you know, religious, spiritual, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's kind of where this like album kind of plays in, especially with this, like being like the intro and kind of like where he's at and, you know, kind of maybe he's a changed person he's reformed or you know something like that as well um and it's nice and it's definitely not something that i would normally listen to so um i thought it was pretty good for uh, a him i guess so i give it a 4.35 on five fair enough um i definitely would say as far as like a standalone track i don't know that i would ever like put this on yeah. to listen to um but I have to say, it's done, like, in the vein of what I grew up with, what I would call, like, boring church hymns, like some sh some shit that's written in the 1800s that they sing today in the dreary funeral march sounds that come from... Listen, I've seen, like, the worst. Like, even when they, like, turn up, it's still at, like, fucking 94 BPM and, like, super slow and, and sad shit. And all the sounds are kind of apocalyptic. Mm -hmm. So, like, not all of them. Our God's an awesome God there. That's a banger. Like, that one's like, our God is an awesome God. That shit's a banger. And, yo, if you find some fucking techno remixes to that shit and they spike up the BPM, <laughs> mm, is delightful. I'll praise God to some fucking uh, dubstep. I'm just saying yeah, that right. sounds like a good time to me um but like overall i found this to be an enthralling experience to listen to and i think um especially after hearing the album this is a very fitting uh opener for this project right because there's a lot of him that we're going to explore and a lot of opinions yeah. and a lot of things that are coming through and considering his life and i guess some of the more transformations that have happened it feels like we're gonna go through this realm of human emotions but before we do let's start off with humility right so he kind of humbles himself before god and asks for mercy because at the end of the day maybe he feels the need for forgiveness his life's been complicated etc i don't fucking know the specifics i'm saying you still feel that he's coming through a lot of especially with some of maybe the you know the ups and downs we get to it's like okay so he puts god there or however he manifests it kind of puts him before and shows he's a humble person yep and then in the face of my life, make haste through your love and saving grace. I am on bended knees. Father, I plead. And while he's like singing this out, though, I find it so joyful, right? Like he finds solace in this, right? He's found comfort and peace and joy in this humility, in this letting go to God. It's like that shit, like when my grandmother would sing in church and she'd be happy and whatnot because she's like... I found the music was trash, but she got lost in that. Like, it was some serious prayer. And I've seen this look on so many people's yeah. faces where it's, like, almost this religious experience through it. And I feel like he captured the essence of this. Like, he cleansed his soul, in a sense, and he shared all of that with us in this song. And it was just such a beautiful start. There's not a lot of lyrics, but there's a lot of emotions. And then he starts doing some cool stuff, like harmonizing. Like, on the, the last come, when you hear it at the end, it just has this, like, build-up. It's really great to listen to. Yeah. The beat's big it has a lot happening but in a beautiful way that it fits right and i guess the saxophone or whatever it is it just added flair where like it doesn't come off like somebody's about to fall asleep like yeah no. like it gives it it's like this, uplifting like, it almost wakes you up and gets you ready for the next song and brings you in and i, and I like it it starts on a positive note i find like uh yep. be humble you know it's nice uh, i give it a 4.5 would i listen to this on its own probably never again but i think it's a fitting start to the project experience and so if i were to listen to this album i'd feel compelled to listen to this rather than go over it which again yeah, it's a little out of my comfort zone but it's well put together yep. uh instantly i was like this is going to be an experience because it's not music i would normally throw on but instantly you can recognize and the i'm glad we got to do this in the, the in the summer because i feel like i don't know i always feel like reggae is like such good like summer music Anyhow, um, the next track on this project is called Yes Me Friend. If you were to ask me to like stereotype what I thought this album was going <laughs> to sound like the whole way through, it would have been Yes Me Friend. 
okay yeah. this is what i pictured before coming into the project because again i'm not that exposed to reggae i know it's a it's maybe a sin in the eyes of some but i've listened to very little bob marley mm. um i don't know very much about the genre at all but i really enjoyed the sound of this maybe as i've gotten older i don't know i just i just liked it like it just fucking just flows through it just has such a great vibe to it mm -hmm. uh but what did you think yeah i definitely agree with you this one definitely sounds more like traditionally reggae or whatever like kind of like that in that sense it's kind of like slow and smooth and easy and just like chill it's a, like a nice beat um you know they're just kind of talking about that they're free and like no war could break them you know they're free uh and they're you know the streets are theirs and you know they're taking over and it's you know but in a good way oh and this is featuring uh, bob marley's son stephen marley just to mention that so we're getting like the full full-blown like typical reggae experience right at the beginning um and basically like the fact that he's been uh he's been in jail for 10 years and now he's free he's out again he there are you know the bars couldn't keep him in um in that sense and i think that this is like a pretty honest song and kind of you know telling that this is going to be you know him being emotional and you know kind of touching different things and you know i don't know so i think it's kind of interesting and uh you know he's just generally like thankful that he's out of jail that he's you know he's free and um it doesn't sound um like that it just like it just sounds like merry and like chill and like you know it doesn't it isn't like necessarily like bad about like being in jail just you know he's just thinking about the positive and that he's in the moment right now and this is what he has and it's great um so it's like really just all like in like the lyrics i find um and i found that there was like a lot of like that bob marley influence like just in like the overall style so apparently and i just found yeah. this out it's because it's a cover of yeah, uh, Duppy Conqueror by the Whalers. Hmm. Well, there you go. And then with the Buju verse added at the end with like the ten years and that part's clearly like an add on towards right. his part. But when you look at, the, I didn't hear the original yet. Sorry. Uh, but when you look at the lyrics, it's pretty. It's pretty damn similar. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's cool. <laughs> I liked it. I gave it a four point four on five. I mean, yeah, it, it just comes in strong. I feel following up a little bit on the idea of positivity. I feel like the tone. But, yo, I like the way that this album mixes emotion. And I don't know if it's just a prevalent theme in the music, but some, something that bothers me about happy music in north america <laughs> is how vapid the happiness expressed is like there's no there's no weight to it it's just like la -di -da, -di -da, -di -da, -di da and it's just nothing or it's vapid materialism or it's we had a good weekend or whatever you listen right. to the happy songs and it's just so fucking aimless like checklist item this is a happy song as far as i'm concerned the keys are happy whatever yeah, he's free but it's like I'm free from fucking jail. I lost 10 years of my life and I appreciate my freedom. Yeah. I feel an empathetic reason to be happy. And in, while listening to this album, I was able to actually pinpoint why I dislike so much American happy music. Because that shit just drugs. It's not genuine. There's no, there's no reason to be happy in these people's songs. There was nothing bad enough that happened to make them as happy as he sounds on this one kind of yeah <laughs> but like but, but if you think about it from like a storytelling perspective or an empathy perspective it's just like somebody shows up and goes i fucked your girl i got more money i'm smoking better weed i'm doing all these things yeah you're like i don't care you're great you're happy or somebody goes up like i'm winning i worked hard i'm winning it's like fuck off like whatever or you hear somebody is like I struggled through the tribulations of jail and they couldn't keep me down and I appreciate my freedom and being able to make a song with you, my friend. Yeah. I don't know. That sounds so regular. Like, if I got out of jail, heaven forbid I end up like, you know, and it doesn't happen. But if I ever go to jail and get out, I imagine that the feeling of freedom would make me just be so excited that I could keep and then to keep to myself 
to know that I, you know, like he he kind of like kept his focus, that nothing could kind of deter him. I'm I'm really just not gonna go through the whole bars breakdown. This is technically not the language I speak and I'm comfortable with, and I don't want to like fucking misinterpret some shit. Like I can get the gist of shit. Like clean and pure heart make man prevail. That is fucking clear as fucking day to me. Yep. But I know that the language of shit like shut it upon the main. I think that means shut it out on like the main. But like I could be fucking wrong. So I can't do the linguistic breakdown like I normally would. I can't qual. I can't actually tell you if the bars are good. You know, I'm gonna assume that they are and that I can feel them really powerfully. And I really just think it's all blended really well together. And it's an enjoyable tune that really packs that sense of appreciation you know and i think that's what's cool about it it's not like this selfish self-absorbed i'm happy life is good in this vapid kind of way it's more like it makes you consider why you should be happy like you should be happy in those moments when you like share it with a friend and shit so that's what i got out of listening to this shit and it made me like it because it was i guess a little more realistic it's a little darker a little more realistic but still sincerely happy that being said, I give it a 4.35. It's an enjoyable tune. Yep. It is certainly not one of my favorites on the album, but I fucking like the next one a lot. Let's talk about Buried Alive. All right. Holy shit, I love this song. Like, <laughs> it's just one of those ones you're not maybe expecting a million gajillion fucking percent. Mm-hmm. It, it's just the do 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 like that kind of like alt rock repetitive bass line okay uh fucking bass line mixed with the like kind of more caribbean infused drums yeah it is pretty cool and then kind of glossed over with this super pop sound and then almost like this is like Boudreaux's like fuck it I'm a rock star now <laughs> and like the way he sings it like I got a feeling like the way he holds the notes and shit I'm like this is this is awesome this is just like I don't, like the man is versatile as fuck right yeah. we're on yep. the third track they're a completely different style yep. of music that we're getting here but we're still like maintaining that positivity but again it's still this mixed like fucking darkness to it like absolutely yeah um i don't know like i was buried alive but i'm still breathing i don't know what tomorrow may bring but i've got a feeling Mm -hmm. i am alive there must be a reason i was given one more chance my heart's still beating i mean i don't know who the fuck you are watching this but how can you not listen to those words and apply them to your own life like wherever you are however old you are however big you fucked up you listen to that and you're like you're right buju banton i can make today count more than i did you're right and it's just so fucking encouraging and the way he sings it is just so fucking great yeah i really love it i really he just repeats it again and it's so anthemic you can almost picture like fireworks shooting up <laughs> during the live performance and shit i don't know what the regulations are like in jamaica for that shit but i bet it gets lit then the verse like now all this time i've been blind only running against the wind and again it's like humility of yo i fucked up friends of mine passed with time after living a life of sin i did bad shit that whole world's behind me some may give up many give in it's my determination to win i survived the worst of times i survived yeah this one was pretty fucking clear what he was saying yeah uh in light of my past i made the changes i had to make to win i got through the worst of it and now I'm here living my life and it's the best. And I'm like, fuck. Like that's that's what I mean. Like yeah, that's the kind of like that's the kind of happy I don't feel you get a whole lot of in America. It never feels like this when I hear it. This feels like a man who actually overcame some shit to find this deeper ethereal sense of happiness that comes through the forged fires of struggle. Not just I escaped, but I found solace. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's like we don't we don't look for this here. We don't care about what the whatever the fuck. I guess this is why people like going to Jamaica so much. I guess this <laughs> is why white people fetishize that shit because we just don't have that fucking spirit here. True. This is some gangster shit. Not, not like real gangster. I just say that sometimes when I get hyperbolically excited. Um, it's it's fucking awesome. Um, anyway, second verse is I too like they make a ditch for one, but there would be two in their attempt to hold my life. The wicked things they do. So if you come from me, gonna fuck you up is what I appreciate took from that. Maybe yep. I'm wrong, but I make I brave and I conquered a grave. Whoa, Lord, the Lord is my salvation. Of whom shall I fail? So and then again, he throws it all up to God with the pure humility. Uh, and basically, you can't come from because he's protected and blessed and shit. 
And then I just like how it ends with like heart still beating, heart still beating, my heart still beating. And meanwhile, the whole time you just got this pumping beat. It's just beautiful. It's just so fucking well put together. I give this shit a 4.75. Um, I wasn't expecting to like as many songs on this album as I did, but I feel like the more I listen to this project, the more I really came to like fucking really fall in love with a few of these tunes, and this is absolutely one of them. But what did you think of it? Yeah, um, yeah, I agree with you. This one is very like hopeful. Um, you know, basically that you know he was given a second chance at life, and he's you know he's not going to to waste it. Um, you know, he was buried alive, and I think that means prison. And again, um, you know, in that sense, is that he's like out. Uh, and you know, when when someone's in jail, it's almost like they they've been forgotten, and like that's it, they're mm. gone. You never see them again, and that's it. And so it's sort of like you're still alive and you're still living but nobody gives a shit about you basically when you're in jail so um i think it's probably kind of like that that he's talking about but he's he's you know out of that you know grave essentially and um this is like his time and he's not gonna waste it and you know he's like determined to do something meaningful with his life i think that's also why there's like so much I mean, I haven't listened to it like any of his other stuff, but um, like that's why it for me like it feels like very like spiritual, like a little bit in every song. Like there's like something about it. It's you know kind of like the guiding force for him, and um, you know, and he's his singing is like um, powerfully mixed with like the music and like the electric guitar, and it's kind of like cool how it has like all this kind of vibe to it um and it definitely has like a really great rhythm to it as well um so i gave it a 4.5 i you know it's uplifting and he survived and he's going to keep moving forward and he won't give up until he's really truly dead that's fair and if you thought this was good i think it just gets better on the next one (laughs) i said we blessed Yo, you gotta, like, take all of my grades for granted a little bit. I apparently gave this a 4.35 when I checked my notes. I was very wrong. This is a 5 on 5. This is an amazing <laughs> tune. I love this. I, it kind of funny. I've been, like, it's playing It's true. He's been dancing lot. around to it a it's lot. It's fucking great. Like, just everything. Like, we are striving to reach feet with gold. I can't do the accent right. Whatever. But the way he does he the tries. rhythm and it's shit. very cute. Dem a fight and spot to the... Uh, Dem a fight and spot to the main control. Dem a real asshole. I just the way he does that to dim a real asshole it's fucking great i just fucking proper but it's interesting right like because he's like we're trying to go out there and then he got other people trying to hold us back and they're fucking assholes but at the same time we've been coming we've been grinding we've been getting our, our piece of this shit we've been pushing for it and you know i feel like he's finally breaking through on this and then at the end of the day when the haters and people who are kind of watching them feeling a little jealous you get this chorus where it's just like yo Tell them, say we bless. Tell them we bless. Tell them we bless. Tell them we bless. And it's like, fuck you. But tell them we bless. Like, we don't need you. Like, we good. Yeah. And I fucking love it. I just think it's got the best fucking energy, man. Um... I don't know. It just it's just really enjoyable to listen to. The beat's got, like, this fucking danciness to it. Where, <laughs> I mean, listen, I... I have watched many of these dance hall dance videos where the the people do some very extreme crazy ass shit. Like when I, I mean, say crazy I don't know if it's ass like shit, that in every dance I mean hall like or... dudes climbing on top of ladders to do the pelvic thrust of breaking <laughs> hips into the other. I'm like, sometimes it's pretty wild. I don't like. I'm not saying this goes on at the Buju Benton show. I just don't really understand that part of dance hall. Co- I mean, I don't know if it's just like a meme thing. I don't know if it's like a sincere competitive nature to like out. And I don't get it at all. I just know that when you watch a dude when you live in a place climb that's like on a really ladder hot and, I don't and know. literally poof, right onto her and you're like, damn. Or like the other side of it, I really like how the dancing a lot of times might also seem like dude is just there and she is doing all sorts of shit in front of you. And it just looks like a good time. And that's the kind of the vibe I got off of this tune. <laughs> where like i'd be standing there and you know somebody's it, it would just sound like a good time in front grinding up on that shit it would just sound lovely to the beat and the way it flows and shit yep. i can just picture booties going it's very lovely but lyrically it's still fucking proper he comes in he's got like this edge to his voice in this one like you don't fuck with him on it he's mad now almost like he's and it's it's kind of weird how he's like appreciative on buried alive he's this like aggressive tone on blessed 
But you know, like it's fucking cool. Yeah. How he's fucking with like it's it's shall we say upside down. Maybe that's part <laughs> of the point of this album. Um, I I can't go through all the bars. I can just give you the general sense of like fucking liking it. Like, bless up. Who down with we fuck the rest? Tell them not nah, broke like dog and we not dest. I don't know. It sounds amazing. I can't tell you. I, I'm just. <laughs> I know how white I look right now. I accept it. I accept it. This song is just real great. Like, it's really, like, and the fact that it, like, flows through and just pounds onto that beat, his delivery just versatile across it. Again, y'all get it. I'm just repeating myself. It's a five on five. Yeah, um, I, I mean, thank goodness, goodness that there were lyrics online because, honestly, I have, like, no idea what he was saying on this one. Um... They're blessed. They're not stressed. They're not like you know worried about anything, and um, you know like they take care of their own. It has a really nice beat to this one, um, but like overall, in terms of like listening to it, I f- feel like I had like a lot of difficulty with it, um, and like I wasn't. I think that because of that, like I didn't necessarily feel the vibe when I was listening to it. Um, just because I couldn't keep up with what he was saying. I feel like that's like such like a, I don't know, Canadian problem. <laughs> because I, I feel I like if you like, are like, you know, if you understand or are from Jamaica or you understand like, you know, how Jamaicans speak or Patois or I don't know if it's both or one's the, one and the same, but um, it might be more enjoyable for you. Definitely it's been enjoyable for me watching you dance around to this one. Um, I gave it a four on five. A banger. Yeah, I gave it a four on five. So that's what my. Well, you gave it a little grade initially too. So I'm just gonna it was say. Never because of the linguistics of my understanding of patois. <laughs> it was because of me not feeling the vibe at first, yeah. and then I felt the vibe. Well, yeah, that's why I'm like I kind of missed out on the vibe. You have plenty of chances this week to hear the fucking vibe. It is anyway. Um, I don't know why I'm so salty. The truth of the matter is, this moment will not be retained in my memories. So phase one of the album ends, <laughs> and phase two starts here, and it was very abrupt in my opinion, because yeah, I, okay. I kind of wasn't expecting it. Because I'm saying the phase, because it lasts a long, it lasts like most of the rest of this part of this review is going to be the love phase, is what I'm calling it. Because let's be real, John Legend kind of appears on like one kind of song yeah i've never seen him on something that's not love and that's <laughs> where we're at here now he's like the barry white of like today's he's very lovely and i mean even in the beginning now what shall i do you confess to me that you feel the same way too girl girl come forth and rock my world so i guess he's thinking back or he has memories of his great time with this girl probably it's complicated whatever yep and it's just not happy. So I guess uh, this is another area of his life that's a little upside down, his love life. I imagine coming out of prison, it may be complicated. Uh, yeah. Maybe your past stuff's no longer available and your new stuff is whatever. I know he was dating somebody. I don't know if he's still with them. Anyway, I just thought to myself, though, I'm not the right market for this. <laughs> I rethought it. I said, if I'm Buju, and I know I got all these women up in there. I'm gonna pro. I bet there's a lot of love for the women in his life, and I feel like that part of the music is something that should be explored, even if it's not like love songs aren't my favorite and shit. This wasn't like vapid, right? This was like a, again, it's tinged on a subject matter level with some reality that I can get behind. That isn't just that typical vapid Hollywood uh, Hallmark kind of fucking bullshit, you know? Yep. I guess I'm not over you like I thought I was. Guess I was fooling myself because I'm still in love. Still in love with you, etc. The rest of the lyrics just literally just roll into like, I can't get over you no matter how hard I try. Whatever. But John Legend sounds lovely. Like, it's impossible to listen to the man and be like, John Legend sounds bad. No, he sounds fucking lovely. But I think that's the <laughs> problem. I don't know how much I want to sit there and listen to John Legend sound Yeah, he's not, he's not my cup of tea. And then um, the chorus comes through... And, and it's fine love is not games to play yes we went our separate ways but the memory oh, blah. like this is the, this is some chick flick shit to me like it's just like we got to a chick flick part of the album like we, we had some dude shit and i was feeling it like i'm gonna say blessed felt like a little dude shit to me and now we're on some girl shit and i'm like okay yeah 
that's where we at but buju does in my opinion enhance the song when that beat flips up and all of a sudden it's like we drop the soft ass r&b inspired fucking heavy bleh, kind of sleeper shit like i don't know i'm certain a lot of y'all like like i could see how a lot of people would fuck to this like a lot of people would make love to this <laughs> not me i don't make love to this vibe yeah you can tell by her reaction she ain't making love to this vibe either she wants some it's much. britney bitch pumping shit nah. I don't know if that's true, yeah, actually. Like Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, not a lot of music goes on generally in my sex lives. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. I don't have, like, a particular sound. But mm. I can tell you one thing. This does not get me wanting yeah, no. to, to fuck as much as maybe, like, some... I don't know. Anything that's more dirty or, like, ed- like harsh or darker shit, you know? I don't know. Maybe I'm a freak. Uh, but he's like, treasure your body, but I treasure your mind. And I'm like, hmm, this guy just keeps saying really good shit. Like, I value your body because you're fine. And let's be real, I'm a dude. But, yeah. yo, I also think your mind's important. Boom. The panties just dropped everywhere. I just watched them. And <laughs> boom. It hit the fucking floor. Uh, even though it's complicated, which is most of the time. Oh my gosh, she still values True. her mind and who she is as a person, even if shit's complicated. He's literally not like other guys. Boom. I guess, like, seriously, everybody else we listen to, girl, it's complicated, but fuck me while I go fuck the hoes, is, is typically the narrative you would get out of it. So, yep. props to Buju for dropping some real game for the men to really get some game if you catch my drift. Mm-hmm. A life without your love ain't working out fine. I'm like, no wonder the stereotype is you bring your white girl down to the islands and she goes and fucks him. Those are lines, man. Yep. Those are fucking lines. It's not my cup of tea, but uh, take notes. Those are lines. (laughs) Perceptions in reality clearly define. I bet you never know the love me having on me heart. We make simple mistakes, tear us apart. And then just the wisdom of understanding the concept between what we perceive what's real the complications the mistakes the harsh words and it's just got this jaded ending and i'm like wow it's really powerful i'm still like listen i'm never gonna throw this track like when i listen to this project this is a little section of the album that skip over a little bit unless there's literally a lady that's present going keep that one on upon which of course sure but Bonnie isn't feeling it, is what I'm seeing on her face. So I don't have to worry about that one. And then, yeah, the, the second, the last Buju verse, over many moons since we part, but the memories remain with the loving of me heart. And I like that. I like how he tries to, like, he goes through this next verse, like how he's kind of, you know, thinking back on this love that didn't work out. He still misses her. He still loves her. He wishes it could be there. Um kind of trying to figure out where who messed up who ended it she left a message explaining her pain she said i tried even avoid surrounding distraction and outside noise but we both make mistakes and we both lied oh and now and here we are so at the end of the day it's just that's what it is right there is no fairy tale ending here it's just we fucked up yeah we betrayed each other's trust we can't just go back to this and pretend it didn't happen you can love me and i'll love you but it's over i'm sorry I'm like, that's the most growing up love song ever. Like, who the fuck ends it on this, like, this is the mature and adult way to end your relationship, millennials. And I'm like, point taken, Buju. Point (laughs) fucking taken, Buju. But no, it's amazing. It's it's a really great concept. It's just... It's just not as much my cup of tea. So we dropped it to a 4.35 because big respect for what it does being something I don't really want to listen to. Yeah. Not to take away from the composition of the beat. It's lovely. Um, yeah, I mean, that's this is what it is. He's kind of, you know, still he still loves this woman um, that he, you know, can't really necessarily get over. Um, you know, and it's a nice song with John Legend. You know, he's obviously more... Um, clear in like the way that he speaks like in terms of the fact that he doesn't have an accent to me um and like it's it's a pretty awesome mix with buju because he just sounds like so jamaican um so it's kind of like a nice like contrast to like have like the two like artists working together i like that um you know love what you know that was but love that's you know over and lost now and yeah like you are you know i was talking i like some of like the 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 lyrics in the verse three 
Um, except there was some, like, when you got, because you kind of skipped over them. Um, care not, care not how many friendships I start. This spot where you touch, still tender and soft. This here is, to be honest, I do miss the fire. I do miss the fires and sparks, but I'd rather live on the rooftop or somewhere in a park. I was like, that light's kind of like, like, he, you know, he would rather be alone and like living like a homeless guy than like, I guess, you know, having to, to be with her and not feel like that love that once was there, I guess. So I well, just I thought that while, like, like, it sounds a little bit more like Dr. Seuss there. I just thought that those were funny lines. But that's my opinion. Um, anyways, it's nice. And I like the two styles that, that they, you know, that they have. Um, I like the topic, you know, that love changes memories of love. You know, he's just remembering fondly. He doesn't, you know, hate this. You know, he's not like, oh, fuck this bitch, blah, 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 whatever. You know, he's remembering the moments that they had and that they had love. But unfortunately, it's no longer there. And it is what it is. So I gave it a 4.25. All right, let us move on to another one, A Lovely State of Mind. All right. How do you feel about this one? Well, it's, uh, yeah, more of that loving, lovey stuff. Um, This one is just kind of sounds more, like, sexy and loving and slow and kind of like that and that, you know, he's... He's found his happiness in, you know, in this lovely woman that he's with now. And, um, you know, it, there's there's nothing that can co- that can compare to the love between a man and a woman. And, you know, a little, you know, heteronormative. But, hey, uh, small steps for Buju. I'll, uh, you know, give him that. Um, and <laughs> we have, you know, more saxophone. So he's kind of, like, sticking with that kind of, like, 80s just I don't know if it's necessarily 80s but saxophone just always puts me in the 80s um you know just because they were just really overdid it in the 80s um but yeah it just kind of like is like that and it's just an easy slow chilled out love song that's kind of nice and that's it four on five so the advantage <laughs> to this song is I can picture how, again, my pelvis and a lady's pelvis are going to come together in a slow, sensual, back and forth grinding. And um, this could end up with the slip and slide of the wet times, which is lovely. Mm. That is a lovely state of mind. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It is a lovely place to be. Um, look, this is just not, not really for me at all. I don't slow no. dance anymore. Maybe I should. Maybe I should slow dance. But that's, like, I could feel like, Neither of us listen to music like this to slow dance to. Um, maybe we should. I mean, I Here suppose we if we slow dance to this, it would be a lovely time. It would be I'd be in a lovely state of mind. Mm-hmm. I might even be happy like a kid in a candy store. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, I don't want to be unhappy anymore. Oh no no. And then again, I love it. You can't even have this lovely state of mind song without that sense of realism, that balance of emotional complexity, right? The reason he's in a lovely state of mind, why he's so infatuated, why he's so excited that he finally found a love that's truly his is because he's unhappy, because he's lonely, because this person is able to solve these little problems that to cure this state of it. So while most of the song is focused on this outward expression of joy, of and again, it's it's temporary. It's a state of mind. And I, I love how he does this. I love how fucking bang on in terms of the, uh, maybe... I just philosophically can understand how he appreciates the world. Like life is moments, right? In this moment that I am sharing with you, you know, this this person, I have a lovely state of mind with you. It's beautiful. I want more of this. You elate me. You know, like, and again, I can picture the panties dropping. I can picture how, like, people will, will have lots of sex because of this song. Like, <laughs> that's just what I predict will happen. At least he will. I mean, I think he's getting laid either way. I'm just saying, he's sad, man. I saw he looks so fucking healthy, man. He's in like such good shape. He's able to move proper, and he's he's distinguished age now. He's in his 40s, I believe. Yeah. It's distinguished. Those guys, ops, guys who are in good shape in their 40s, 
set for fucking life in the girls well department. i mean if he put his mind to it and worked out all the time in jail then no but yeah, regardless sure. that's my uh, anecdotally i've noticed men who are not in shape in their 40s who maybe are not with a partner they struggle like motherfuckers mm -hmm. men who are in shape in their 40 can get women of literally any age they want <laughs> they get 18 year olds with daddy issues 30 year olds with daddy issues 60 year olds with daddy issues and 40 year olds who are dysfunctionally issues. divorced I'm right. broken. Okay. Who the fuck single out 40 and all together? Mm, true. Just saying. Anyway, I'm, I'm, we're, all, we're all broken goods in my eyes. <laughs> Look, I like this track. I think it hits into what it is. I'm never really going to listen to it again. But I, I was listening to it while I was cycling earlier today. And I thought it was lovely, okay? It's all lovely. It's just I'm not the biggest fan of lovely shit. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just not that guy. Still, 4.25 because it's beautifully put together. It is well composed. And again, from a versatility front, it showcases something completely different than what we've gotten on this album. And it does make this branch of love songs more complicated, more honest, and shows that it's like a multi-dimensional shit. Something that maybe should be appreciated. Maybe. If you were to say, stereotypically, Holden, what do you think this album would have sounded like? Appreciated is a good contender for a direction yeah. I would have thought this sounded like. So I'm going to assume this is more of a traditional-esque reggae sound. Yeah. I don't know that. I'm assuming because my prejudice is kicked in. <laughs> um, we're back on that love shit. The dynamics of the situation cannot get squealed. It's like Lyle walk outside in the rain. See, hear me now, girl. I don't, I don't fucking know what that means. Um, I'm going to assume <laughs> shit's complicated. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe Or maybe she's great. Why? Because no one ever touched me the way you touch. I understood hey, that. Hey, hey. I like that, yo. <laughs> you know what we did right before this. Anyway, uh, girl, I've got to let you uh, leave me wanting you so much. You know what we're going to do after this. Uh, girl, I gotta let you know how you release your love. You know, hitch around the clock, nurse. Anytime me, me feel sick. I like that line because it's just. I mean, I could parse what it means. Like, yep. you like the nurse making me feel sick around the clock. You got me. Basically, we fuck any day, and I just like the, that's that's to me great. I don't know. Like, I I really enjoy the way it's put together. Yep. Maybe it's just like I'm, it. I'm like a white Canadian, and that's like the most basic fucking bar ever. But it sounds so cool because it fucks with the grammar of how I understand English. I know it's not an English bar per se. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just telling you why I'm geeking on it. Then that you're appreciated and I'm so glad we've dated. After all the cards we've been dealt, your love resonated. So much could be stated. Some say it's easy and done. That said, how many nights we both go hungry to bed. You're kind of landlord knocking at we head. You could have called it quits, but you insisted. And woman, you never make a next man get to your head. Ah, I mean... I think what's happening here is, again, we're looking, all of this is maybe looking back on love, the different aspects of it. So right. he contextualizes it at first with memories where he knows that he really doesn't want this thing, but he's looking, the next series of songs are actually just memories of this relationship. So lovely state of mind is another memory of the relationship. Here, he's appreciating the fact that he had this love that he lost, etc. It made him feel good. Um, and he kind of like I, I feel like he just appreciates all the different things like the way he dealt with clothes and how they fucked and yep. how they touched and how beautiful she was and how good it was and I say it was because I, again I don't I don't feel like this isn't a present I feel like this is the shit he never said to her when he had the chance to say it to her so he's using this album as an opportunity to drop the words that maybe should be said and to express himself in that regard and when you're honest like that like I said, the panties, they drop. Ta-da! Anyway, this is a, this is a good one. <laughs> um, I feel like it's all right. Um, we're still on the same grind of things. Yep. Uh, it's a 4.25 on 5 for me. Yeah, I mean, it has a nice, fun beat. Um, I appreciate uh, the trumpet. Um, and, like, honestly, like, sometimes I just find uh, the way that he, like, speaks or sings or whatever just, like, so hard to understand and it's like such like a like a laziness like like because it's just like chilled out like in mm. in the language that it's hard to pull the words out because like everything just comes out like it's 
like one word is one sentence is one sentence almost like it just doesn't break it's just like blah 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 blah, 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 blah. It's, it's like a chilled relaxed language that it just kind of like there's no distinct breaking up of the words um in that sense so it's just kind of fun to like listen to and you know experience someone else's culture you know just in like their language um and uh like he's just you know really happy with his new lady and she cooks and Is cleans for lady? him i think so that's what it was he's talking about this uh, you know i'm guessing I it's not it the like, one that he broke up with i thought okay like i honestly don't know it, you could be right that's, that's my interpretation of it that you know that he's happy with this this new woman that he's with now and that she cooks and cleans for him so he loves that and Gosh, you know, treats wish. him so good. That's not how it is in my life. Sometimes. Um, Rarely. <laughs> and she nurses him when he's like sick and he takes care of him and all that. And he appreciates her. Um, and yeah, it's nice. And, you know, he loves his lady. And for me, like, you know, maybe just because I have a limited experience in, uh, you know, reggae. I have some experience in listening to it. But it just sounded or made me think of um of ska and it's kind of just because of the horns um and i don't know why but that's what i thought of but i gave it a 4.35 on five fair enough i think we can continue on uh the next track is called trust, trust. yo finally it's like we left the drought of love songs and moved into <laughs> something a little more up my alley of enjoyment yo i realized there are music videos on this project i personally watched them all I can't remember much of them, except that Buju Banton looks extremely healthy, and I hope that at his age, I have a semblance of that level of health, because fuck, that man is in a good shape for his age, is all I'm trying to say. Um, and his hair is so cool. But yeah, this one just comes in with a different kind of vibe, and like, you know, I don't trust the phones, I don't like them, I don't know, because there's like a certain level of evidence, like, you know, summer day or rat, you can smell them damn fucking rat. And then he like kicks in with the fuck. It just fucking bang. It just got me hyped up. What can yep. I say? But basically, you know, the the phone equates to rats and snitches and shit because it's too easy to get the evidence or the trackers or the whatever. So in a sense, it's like you don't like technology for a good reason, you know. Um, and then pictures I go around say Simon, I'm my wifey, babe, fuzzy picture, message me and knife it all over Instagram. I fuck with me psyche. So it's like, you know, pictures of him going around, maybe with the next chick, maybe this. Yep. All it is kind of people watching him and this is it's fucking with him. So he doesn't, you know, trust uh, Switch, Dumpy, and Nike, whatever. I took from the end of this that, like, basically he doesn't trust small fuckers who are just filming shit and snitching shit out like that and in the video you can't really see what's actually happening and then you know they're gonna sell you out your so-called friends are gonna sell you fucking out and you got to imagine like he went to jail in 2011 when like social media was honestly just for young people and shit and he gets out in the instagram era of fucking hip-hop and yep. whatnot that's got to be a transition so i thought it was <laughs> fucking interesting to hear his disdain because it really it's coming from yo like it's kind of turning y'all into traitors and snitches and shit you know so be careful who you send your voice note that's an interesting point like some good advice yep. don't be sending fucking snitching ass messages or, or messages that can be used against you by them snitches you know watch who you link and what you're talking about no send nobody nothing what, uh, what nobody else wrote them in a group chat i saw your thing leak out so basically you know like people be kind of be careful what you're putting out there who you give your links to who you give whatever people's leaking right. music leaking everything and then it just flows through with a bunch more where i could try to break it down but at the end of the day um it just kind of feels like be careful because these motherfuckers is cut through and i'll take you out you can't trust people they're not going to keep your secrets you know uh no lend them your things they will kill your feed to keep it don't trust nobody if you do things no speak it i them the upon social media i leak it so it's kind of like in the same vein of all the other like don't tell people your business because they got big mouths only but yo there's fucking social media this time do you all not see what's happening yep. it's almost like he's he's like shock like are y'all kidding me <laughs> how did y'all let this happen it's really fascinating um the beat's amazing, his energy's amazing, his voice delivery on this is just fucking amazing, 
and again, it's like taking a positive title like trust, we'll say, and juxtaposing it with content that is the absence thereof. So I love the way he's using his song titles, in my opinion, to create some level of confusion or irony. It's really well done. Artistically, yeah. this album is next fucking level. So thank you, Jonathan Barnes. I get this a 4.5. I like this one a lot. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think that this one, um, like for me, is about like what happens when people are involved with uh, him and his friends, and like if you you are not if you tr are turned out to be like not trustworthy, um, and if you're talking shit about them, then they will just like shut you up with like one strike, and that's it. And like. Um, I obviously um, really dug the gun sounds that were featured on this song. I love, I lo always love that. Um, it's like a funky song, but it's still like pretty tough at the same time. Um, and I, this is another one where I, you know, barely understand what he's saying. And just, um, you know, be careful who you tell your secrets to is kind of like what he's saying. And just, you know, be careful of like what you're sharing and like all of that. Um, and overall, yeah, I really like the sound of this one. It definitely sounds like something that like, you know, I would imagine hearing if I was on like a Caribbean vacation or whatever, you know, maybe minus the gun sounds. But um, yeah, I mean, I like this one too. I gave it a 4.5 on 5. All right. So moving on. I think we can say the next one might be a little bit about maybe a little more lady get brought up again. Yeah, yeah. But so is Pharrell. Pharrell comes in. So Pharrell. Let's talk about some delicious dessert. Wait, with cherry pie makes you happy? Oh, well, yeah. But so does Pharrell. I mean, this very much sounds like Pharrell's involved and the Neptunes are involved or something. Like, it just, cool. yeah, it's produced by the Neptunes. You just feel it from, like, the second of it. But can I ask y'all a question? Mind reader. I saw you from behind. I thought that you were mine. I'm like, hold up. That just sounds like Pharrell showed up behind a girl and said, fuck it. I can just take this because I thought it was mine. I'm going to say. Maybe he just mixed it up. Maybe he's, you know, I don't know. I do believe in Pharrell's life. The stats are in his favor. <laughs> I really do think that nine times out of ten, if he grinds up on a girl, that girl is happy that Pharrell is there. I'm not I saying mean, isn't there. He's not my number one choice. But, but if Pharrell wants to fuck. He sounds like he's down for a good time. I feel like he gets his way a lot, not because mm. he's rapey, but when you hear these lyrics. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Like it almost comes off like Pharrell's just so used to getting free, whatever. Like you can just look at a girl and charm her. That the idea of consent no longer exists to Pharrell <laughs> because. It's, all my it's good never honor. needed. You know, like, the women are just I'm listening to these bars them. and I'm like, okay, maybe I'm just reading way too much into that. But, like, it, it came off a little creepy that, like, he's like, hmm, zoom, oh, yeah, you're my, like, not even a hi, what's up, girl, but a, nope, I just saw your body and decided I'm going to possess it for the night. And that kind I think, of, no, I think he saw her ass. Mm, yeah, that it's, was It enough. also was called, you know, I don't know, cherry pie and it could, be, like, Maybe just because I've watched like the Doja Cat music video, but her ass is the ch two cherries, mm -hmm. so like that's what I was thinking. And then um, your zodiac sign was fine. I don't know what that means. That's a weird line. Rum with a twist of lime, cherry pie in my eyes convince me that you're the one. Okay, I guess in Pharrell's case, and this is really only for Pharrell. When you have a fine ass girl in your face, only you, works for Pharrell. Like there's very few people in life that never aged slash consistently made songs that women love for like 25 fucking years like Lenny who? Kravitz yeah sure all I'm saying I mean if you're like a he 40, still gets the girl like or 40, the women 40 year old plus woman and shit but Pharrell is just like there and he looks 20 still so like he's in a really good place that's all I'm saying uh I don't know maybe I'm just going on a weird tangent and all y'all watching this are like shut the fuck up and move <laughs> fine um I find Pharrell just really just went in on that one. He's like, I got it. And then maybe that's confidence and I don't get it. I don't know. Maybe Me Too fucking made everything weird and now I question things in a way I wouldn't. But he was okay. on Blurred Lines, right? Which yeah. is extremely rapey. So I'm not a thousand percent off on Pharrell's ideas of consent maybe being something to be questioned. Uh, not Fair to say enough. he's bad. Just to say that it's something to ponder. 
you know, so you might as well wind your body, move your body. Again, he wants you to like convince him he's great because he saw your ass, so shake your ass. Is all Pharrell has said to us. There is none of that charm and appreciation that Buju has given us. Fine, whatever. What the fuck can I say about Pharrell? That guy is doing much better in life than I am. <laughs> um, then Buju comes in, wind up your way, set the pace and done, bubble up your body where the bantan come. Fair enough. He's coming through. Look good. Dance for him. And uh, that seems to be the gist of the whole less, song. Yeah. Uh, the girl is attractive, so dance for a me. And um, yep. that's the whole track. Now, I'm saying it like that because lyrically, it's all I'm left with. I don't have a lot more to say. The girl is basically this delicious piece of cherry pie to their eyes. And with all the stereotypes possible of men being ravenous dogs driven by their dick to consume the woman, Mm -hmm. that's it. Except flyer with more charm and they'll probably get more women than I could ever dream of in my life. Fair enough. I'm not saying that their game plan is ineffective. Right. I'm saying that compared to all the other tracks we've heard this one is a little objectification-y and again maybe okay. I'm reading a little bit too much into it because of all the things and all the things but it's mostly Pharrell not Buju Buju I don't know he just kind of like after the context of all the songs I guess it's fine right like you in the context of the album you've done all the things and you built right. up the emotions and you know now you're just appreciating a woman and sometimes it's just nice to appreciate a woman but then you go on the internet and you read the tweets and then you start rethinking everything. Yep. So this is just me backing off on this one. Whatever. It's an enjoyable fucking tune. Um, I would dance to this. I like the sound of it. I like both their deliveries. I like the way they bounce off of each other in such a the smooth contrast of like smooth Pharrell to like gruff fucking Buju. 4.5 on 5. It's a beautiful song regardless of all of my questioning Pharrell's intentions. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, this one is definitely, it sounds more like a dancing song, um, and I definitely, I like the refrain, um, and like, like, I'm looking at the lyrics when, like, Buju is spitting, and again, it still doesn't sound like words that I recognize, um, <laughs> it definitely has, like, a height beat and a sound, um, and personally, I like Pharrell, so I like him on this one. Um, and there's something about this song that reminds me of one of Kendrick's songs. And, like, I was thinking, like, maybe, like, real, like, in, like, that same sort of, like, beat. Like, it kind of has something. So let me know if you hear that. Um, I don't know. I like the feeling that this one makes me feel. I, you know, it makes me feel cool. It makes me want to whine my body. This is the song that was stuck in my head for, like, a week uh, like, and yeah, and so, it's nice. Like, I could definitely, like, get down so to this So, evidently, one. the facts is Pharrell can, in fact, just go up to women yeah. and say, wind your body, and Buju can too. And, and just, I will just wind my I, body, and that's all I can do. just don't have that power, and I, unfortunately, don't have that power. It's all in the hat, I think. But anyways, I gave it a 4.4 on 5. I mean, it's nice. I can definitely, like I said, I can get down to this one. Oh, it's an amazing song in that mm-hmm. regard. I just went on that tangent because I thought about it every time I heard Pharrell say it. Anyway, right. that's okay. Maybe they're going to listen to all this and then I'm going to check the comments and be like, oof, I got beat in bad. I don't think that made <laughs> any fucking sense. Yo, it feels like he's rapping on this one over this fly-ass fucking beat. It's absolutely delightful to listen to, mm-hmm. in my opinion. It's just strong. If you were to ask me what the fuck he's saying, I know <laughs> that he wants to beat them bad and that they're going to feel the belt and yep. that a genuine leather belt will be used because this is the more effective belt to use to beat them. I'm assuming this is something many kids can attest to. Uh, never say never when you know you're clever. If you believe that you're smart and you got the skills you can get through. And then the rest of this track is just kind of, I'm going to go with, um, if you fuck with him, he'll fuck you up. That's the best I got. I can't, but it sounds so good. He sounds so cool doing it. Uh, like he's back, he's fresh, all this shit. But like, I, I had a little bit of trouble understanding him in this one a little bit more. Um, but it's cool. Uh, I got the feeling he's not a gangbanger. Uh, he does what he has to do. He tries to keep it all smart, and he doesn't want to get involved in bad shit. Um, maybe I'm wrong, because I don't know. But I liked when he said, real lion, make them empire crumble. That's pretty cool. 
Anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to try that hard on this one because I can't. <laughs> I can't really go through it. But overall, energy and tone was aggressive. It felt like a powerful tune. It felt like because like I don't know, the love stuff doesn't really inspire me as much. Yep. Cherry pie, it's nice. I could take your lady down. This makes me want to fucking get shit done. You know, I just want to beat them with the fucking belt and shit. It has an energy to it that I fucking like. Yeah. So this one, I really enjoyed it a lot more uh, and I, well I mean I give it the same grade but I feel like I enjoyed it this would be like more regularly played rest cherry pie is one of those tracks I would throw on when I'm trying to like create a vibe for other people and it's a good song for that purpose but beat them bad is some shit that I can throw on a playlist and fucking vibe to it I'm feeling like copying and pasting and shit hmm see I don't feel like that um, like this is like my least favorite song on the album, I think. Um, <laughs> like I'm not really sure who exactly he wants to be beating, but like you said, it definitely involves a belt. Um, I, again, really didn't understand this one, unfortunately. Um, the beat was all right. I just I don't have very much to say about this one. It just didn't leave me with much. Um, it has like hints, especially at the beginning of. Um, girl i want to make you sweat like that like beat is like kind of like mixed in at the beginning and it's like kind of i don't know something i recognized and i don't know i don't this one just wasn't for me this is like i said probably my least favorite one so i gave it a 3.9 on five fair enough i am disappointed but it's okay can't so, win yeah, them all um we're about halfway through the album we shall go through the remaining 10 tracks where i think to me it's just pretty uphill from here for most of it in mm -hmm. terms of my enjoyment uh, so yeah, definitely let us know in the comments what you thought of this review, what you think of the album. We'll totally come yeah. back in very soon with the rest of it, give our little wrap up at the end. Um, I appreciated this. So thank you, Jonathan Barnes, for requesting it. Yeah. Like the video if you did. Special thanks to the patrons, Ismail Gadamsi, Chris Prado, Jonathan Barnes, DJ Black Hurricane, Linda Williams. They're dope. They support what we do. You can check that out in uh, the description. I'm about to flip up the page and we don't even know what exactly it's going to look like, but... There will be some stuff there, and if you really want to support us and see us grow as we embark in new kinds of endeavors, you can let us know, or you can do it like that. I also make music, like I said. Check that out. Let me know what you think. On that note, live long and prosper, everyone. Peace, everyone.